All right, welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live on this Wednesday morning. We see stocks remain higher, though, slightly off of their session highs uh, on this third trading day of the week. Uh, again, saw that huge rebound yesterday earlier in today's session, um, the Dow hitting an intraday record high. But let's stay on the markets and talk a bit about uh, where investors have been putting their money over the last year. Dave Mazza joins us now. He's the head of product over at Direction. Dave, thanks for uh, joining the show. Let's start with um, kind of flows you have seen across your suite of products within the last year as retail has gotten more involved in the market, um, certainly a, a more sophisticated retail trader than I think would have um, have been previously you know, believed. And, and how have you seen money move within your suite of products um, as this money has come in? Yeah, I think it's a really actually interesting phenomenon to your point is that we've seen a significant uh, greater number of traders involved with markets, which I think is a positive. In our book of business, which is really tailored toward both thematic ETF offerings and leverage and inverse products that are used by traders, we've seen significant amount of money move into the bull side, which makes sense uh, as markets have really, up until recently, we saw a wobble in September, of course, a recent sell-off, have really moved in one, one direction since uh, really the crash a year ago. When we break that down a bit, it's really been concentrated in those high growth areas, right? Semiconductors, broad-based tech. Now, more recently, we've seen some money move into financials, but actually it hasn't come out of semiconductors, which I think is an interesting uh, phenomenon that we're really seeing is that we're seeing broadening out of participation of the number of stocks that are doing well. The question is, and we're seeing it today, is do we still, are we still in an environment where it's a buy the dip phenomenon uh, that we really have been in for the past three years? Well, and Dave, what are you seeing in your ETFs that reflects that? Because a lot of your products are things that um, sort of capitalized on the pandemic phenomenon that we saw in, in the markets. You have a work from home ETF, for example. You have a moonshot ETF. So these are, have been sort of hot money areas that, as we know, have been more volatile lately. So what are you seeing in terms of those flows? What do they indicate about what could now happen in terms of the turnover we've seen in the market? Yeah, so if, let's let's break those down individually. Work from home ETF, ticker WFH, is a, a really an interesting ETF focused on the 40 stocks that are at the forefront of sort of changing the way the world works. If we actually look at the data, uh, even though uh, it's, it had started to come down, meaning the number of people going back to their offices, we're actually seeing the number of people working remotely using BLS data. So hard data, not surveys, actually increase. So even though we saw a bit of a wobble in those names, uh, we haven't really seen a significant number of outflows um, from a product like that. Now, our Moonshot Innovators ETF, uh, really one of the hottest ETFs since it launched in November, this year has had tremendous performance, focused on small and mid-cap companies kind of at the forefront of disruption. Of course, what's interesting there came off significantly in the last week as we saw a sell-off from some of the, the high multiple, high growth names. But what's interesting from investor psyche, we did see some modest outflows, a few, a few million dollars, but actually yesterday, all the money that came out last week came back in. So what that tells me is for the time being, traders, investors are still looking for, to take advantage of opportunities and are still willing to buy the dip. Now, again, does that always continue? Hard to say, but for the time being, the sentiment is there proving that to be the case. And, and you know, Dave, Kind of the, the compliment to um, those those particular funds that Julie asked about is um, you know what you guys see in, in your areas looking more at value uh, and financials uh, another one um, you know that's out there as well we've seen the financials just have uh, an incredible run on the regular index forget about the three x lever which has done uh, even better than that what have flows been like there and and what do those flows I guess tell you also about the state of the rotation which it feels like it changes every day but um, the move to value has has really proven durable in the last few months. Yes, yeah, so if I look at broad-based ETF flows, we actually saw ETF investors start putting greater money toward value ETFs versus growth ETFs in the back half of last year. So ETF investors were long and wrong for basically six months, and now they've begun to be proven right. Because, of course, once the Pfizer news came out in November, we did see value begin to do well, kind of came off a bit. And now, finally, maybe we're seeing a sustained rotation. But what's interesting kind of in our leverage book, again, which is primarily focused on traders, we still haven't seen as much interest, I think, as you'd expect of people jumping into financials. So, so our 3X financials ETF, FAS. Now, if I look at just the one beta ETF, XLF, uh, that certainly has seen, has seen inflows. But again, I, I still think investors are finding themselves kind of in this push-pull relationship because it's hard to kind of gleam through the data. I actually think, you know, we're actually at least looking at today, we're back into an environment where 
bad news becomes good news, as opposed to good news being good news that we recently saw. So uh, the question, of course, is with that $1.9 trillion coming, does that just continue to sustain the momentum? The inflation data today was a bit weak. We are not necessarily, again, in our book of business, which is more focused on traders, seeing as much uh, momentum toward value as we'd expect. Now, I do believe, again, if, if people continue to kind of underperform in the short term, that may switch. But for the time being, a lot of money is sticking toward the growth side. That's really um, quite interesting, actually, given sort of the rhetoric that we've seen around the reopening trade and the value trade. Um, so you say if, if we continue to see that underperformance in tech, maybe that would switch. Do you think that, I mean, we know that the passage of the aid package is happening. Would something like infrastructure also flip a switch on that or, or you know, bond movement in, in the bond market flip a switch on that? What do you think would make that move more sustained? I, I would, if I were to hone in on one indicator, now they're all interrelated, but it really goes back to the 10 year yield right now. That's setting the tone both for traders and long term investors. Uh, as we know, it's, it's highly correlated. You could plot a chart of simply the 10 year yield or the yield spread two year versus 10 year difference with growth over value. And the relationship is extremely tight right now. It, again, what I, what I believe to be the case is if that continues and if we do see growth continue to underperform, and we don't see snapbacks like we're seeing yesterday and today, uh, then it's going to be difficult, again, for investors, particularly traders, to keep those short-term positions on in our leverage products. And they'll probably rotate uh, toward areas, uh, again, away from semis, toward financials, toward regional banks, uh, which are at the tip of the spear from a yield curve perspective, and then into the energy space. But energy is interesting because it's really, you know, I, uh, I came on the, uh, the program uh, I'll, I'll, at this point a ways ago and said that energy was the trade of the decade. Uh, it certainly has played out in other ways, but it's very difficult for certain investors to own energy right now from an ESG perspective. So what we're seeing is that it's uh, certainly being traded. But I, my question is, is kind of how long does that stay sustained uh, regardless of what happens on the yield side? Financials is a bit cleaner uh, of what that relationship looks like. All right, Dave Mazza, uh, head of product over at Direction. Dave, always great to get your thoughts. Thanks so much for jumping on this morning. I know we'll talk soon. Thank you.